Hello and welcome back to this channel. I'm Ruth, hope you're well. So today we're continuing the series of the true and false prophets. So in this series, I ask the members of the public, you know, does God bless the poor? Is there a connection between our spirituality and our bank account and what they think about the prosperity gospel? So before I open the Bible and discuss about some of these topics, let's hear from the members of the public. So what do you think about Christianity and money? Honestly, I'm just thinking that money and God don't really have to do with like each other. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're completely different things, but at the same time, just like, yeah, money just don't matter to me. Like, as long as you pray to God and like, yeah, you believe in Jesus and you believe you're going to go to heaven, then that's all right for me. Like, that's what I believe. So, like, do you think God blesses the poor? Yeah, because there's many rich people out here who are like suffering with depression because they don't get like that kind of love or any of that. They just, yeah, they they just have the money, but they ain't got people by their side. You know what I mean? And um, do you think there's a connection between your spirituality and the amount of money you have, like in your bank account? That what you mean? Like, do you feel like if you're closer to God, you'll have more money, or God will be have mon more money for you? No. No. And have you heard anything about the prosperity gospel? So the prosperity gospel is basically a gospel that's saying, you know, bring money and God will bless you. So what do you think about that? Mm, I, I don't. I don't believe in that. I just. I just. I think that's just a cheap way that some churches use to get people to put money into the church. Yeah. I don't believe in that, like, even like every Sunday when I go to church, I don't believe in putting money inside the baskets. Like, I'm only here to pray and to like, get rid of all my sins and yeah. So, but why do you think other people believe that and the, in the prosperity gospel? Why do you think it's growing today? Because that's how it is, like, people believe that money kind of makes the world go around. People are kind of forgetting that God is most high. Mm -hmm. But instead, they put materials before their God. So it's kind of like a thing, like it's something that I just don't understand really. Okay. Is there any more thoughts? Or okay. Mm -mm. Okay. Thank you so much for participating, and hope you have a nice day. Oh uh, yeah, you so, too. Okay. Thank. So our first question is: um, Do you think God blesses the poor? No, of course, definitely. Um, the poor you actually find that they have more faith in God than mm. the so-called rich mm. um, and in their faith God has deeply blessed them I came from a poor background mm. um, my family suffered a lot when I was younger in poverty but I saw God's blessing so much more on their lives than I saw a lot of the rich people I knew yeah. so no, God definitely blesses the poor and uh, do you think uh, your spirituality is connected with your bank account and why, if yes or no, yeah? No, spirituality is not connected to your bank account. Um, the amount of money in my account does not determine how much God loves me or how much I love God. Um, I believe we're probably in a culture that has taught us that um, to be rich is to show God's blessing. Mm. However, um, you know, find that anywhere in the scripture that um, your riches as the result of God's love towards you. Mm. God loves you regardless if you're poor or you're rich. Mm. Oh. Yeah. And um, have you heard about the prosperity gospel? It, yes, I, I came from that kind of background where um, a lot of preachers talk about prosperity. It's got much worse now, mm. um, but it's just a, I believe, a means to deceive people mm. who are in need financially yeah. and it's a it's escaped from reality mm. it's like a lottery if you put a little in you're gonna get a great amount out yeah. but a lot of people are being disappointed because of that's not the reality yeah so you mentioned that it's on the rise why do you think that type of gospel now is on the rise in Christianity because of it's, a, it's an easy gospel mm. it's a gospel that you don't have to do anything in your life you don't have to change anything you have to walk morally right you don't have to read your bible so much you don't have to pray all you got to do is sow a seed and yeah. somehow you've got access to god and you get everything you want from him mm -hmm. um so and the generation we live in now it's a quick generation we want things quickly mm -hmm. and so if you give me a gospel that i can receive something quickly then i want that gospel mm -hmm. yeah. so do you have anything else to say around this topic or yeah um 
people, and again, if, if you simply just pick up the, the very same Bible these preachers are using about getting money quickly, you're going to find that even the context of what they're using or the yeah. context of the scripture, it doesn't matter what they're saying. Mm. They, they've added their own mindset, their own philosophy mm. onto it, but the scripture says nothing like that. Yeah. It talks about loving Christ, surrendering to him, mm. living up to the light that you know, and in that context, God loves you. Okay. God loves you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Money is at the back of blessing. Mm. Blessing first, before money. Mm. So, do you think God blesses the poor? God bless the poor, yes. In their own way, in our own way. Mm. There is no poor in the house of God. People make mistake of that voice. Po say poor, that person is poor. Poor in, poor in your face, in spirit. It's not poor. But I mean uh, financially poor. Financially poor? Yeah. This is not the work of God because all his children are blessed. You see, there is an obstacle in every journey, in every human journey. This obstacle is something that is, is, a, is somehow hard to overcome. These challenges, for you to meet these challenges, you must be extraordinary, good or close to God because He is the only one that has the key to unlock all those challenges. If you actually, sincerely, truthfully believe and trust Him, He so, will always unlock that. So do you think your spiritual life is uh, connected with your bank account? 100%. How come? Because this is what I believe. Oh. Because that is the way I know. Because he's the one that leads every step I take. <laughs> so you feel so when your your money is low, you feel like you're disconnected with with God. When your money is low, or if that has nothing to do with with God, disconnecting from God has nothing to do with your weight. Your weight has nothing to do with God. But He blesses you. He blesses each and every soul in different ways. Whether you are poor, you are not poor, that is not what God is counting on in you, in each and every individual. The, your connectivity with God is that spirit mm. that He gave to you that you are living on. If you support the spirit, the spirit will lead you to the right way. Mm. If you are weak in spirit, because each and I believe in my own way that each and everyone has two spirits in them. The spirit of good and the spirit of bad is in you. Depends the one you favor, depends the one you give priority, depends the one you support, that is the one that will lead you. Okay. So do you have any thoughts more? Okay, thank you. Today, yeah. And have you heard like anything about the prosperity gospel or uh I mean yeah, it's kind of so I yeah. just want to check if this is uh -huh. Okay, yeah, so okay. yeah, so have you heard anything about the prosperity gospel? Uh, I believe so, yeah. <laughs> and, and why do you, I mean, what do you think about it? And like, why do you think it's on the rise in like Christianity? I'm not exactly sure, no. Um, I guess, no, I can tell you that one, no, I'm not sure. Yes. Yes. So, do you have any more thoughts in regards to that? What would you, what would you say to someone who thinks, you know, that money is linked with their salvation and things like that? Um, salvation is more than just like monetary, like material things. So if that is what you believe it is, then yeah. I think you should like go and do more research because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's more than just that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for your no time. <laughs> First question is, does God love the poor? You know, does God care for the poor? I think God definitely loves the poor, you know. Um, in the Gospels, Jesus says, 
blessed are the poor in spirit, you know. Mm. Jesus himself was poor, so nobody can tell me that God doesn't love the poor. Mm. Um, and of course some people would be like, if God loves the poor, then why are they poor? Yeah. But the thing is, everybody sees wealth differently, mm. you know. So we think that just because you have money, you're blessed of God. Mm. Well, there's so many other ways that you can be blessed of God. Mm. And as we see, we see that Jesus himself was poor. Like mm. a lot of people in the Bible were poor. Yeah. A lot of people in the Bible were rich. Yeah. Um, and God says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust, the rich and the poor. So I really don't think that the blessing of God comes it is a way that he can bless you, but there's so many other ways that he can bless you. Mm. And I think that when we're focusing on material wealth, we miss the other things that God is doing in our lives. Mm. So um, do you think your spir spirituality is connected with your bank account and why? Whatever answer you choose. So you're saying if you're more spiritual, you're more yeah. wealthy? Yeah. I definitely don't think that at yeah. all. You know, as I said, Jesus himself was was um, a poor person. He was yeah. homeless. We forget that. Jesus yeah. did not have that kind of money. Um, and I think that the more we kind of perpetuate that, we miss out, as I said, on the blessings that God can give us. Yeah. But interestingly enough, um, the Bible talks a lot about wealth mm. um, in Proverbs. There's so many scriptures that talk about wealth. So I think wealth is something that is important to God in that he wants us to manage it for his glory. Yeah. But the thing is, as I, as I would say, wealth is not just in money, it's in time, it's in resources, it's in relationships. Mm. All of the, those things are wealthy. Um, but just because um, I'm wealthy, it does not mean that I'm more spiritual. Yeah. And have you heard about the prosperity gospel? Yes, I yes. have. And um, like, why do you think people are basically accepting that gospel today, especially in Christianity? Like it's ever growing right now today. I mean, I don't know one person who wants to be poor, <laughs> not even one person. Yeah. So I can understand why people are saying things like, if you just sow your seed, you sow 50 pounds, you sow 2,000 pounds, God's going to give you 10,000, he's going to give you a million. Mm. It's really easy, um, it's really easy. Yeah. And so people want that wealth. Mm. Um, I, think, I think another thing is that there's the inherent human greed mm. um, of always wanting more, always wanting more, and not wanting to suffer. Yeah. But I think it's a very, very dangerous gospel. Mm. Not that I think it's a real gospel, but it's a gospel that people say. Um, because there's something about going through hardship that makes you a better person. Mm. Um, there's something about not having, not that all people, everyone who's poor is a good person, yeah. but I just think that God uses different tools. And if we're always looking at wealth, mm. then we're going to miss the other things that God wants us to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I do not subscribe to that yeah. at all. Um, do you have anything else to say in regards to the prosperity gospel? Any closing thoughts? I think it's, I think it's a lie. Yeah. I think it's, robbing people of ha the wealth that they can actually find in Christ which is not monetary maybe monetary but there's I just I just want to emphasize there's so many other things that, apart from money yeah. and um, even a relationship with God is such an amazing thing but if you're just focusing on what God can give you then you're just missing out okay so thank you so now that you have watched these interviews in regards to what the public think about the prosperity gospel i want to turn to some verses in the bible and i'm just going to turn to two books so that's going to be first timothy and also the book of micah where we're going to see the answer in regards to this gospel being over commercialized because we see that today there are so many things happening in Christianity and one of those false things is that the gospel will be commercialized so we see today you know a magical handkerchief that is going to bring blessings we see money a uh, throne on you know water that's going to give blessings we see that people are saying you know if you want to be pregnant give money give fruit and all these things but we have to remember that when Christ was on this earth when he did miracles when he healed the women with the he hemorrhage when he healed the blind when when he healed the lepers he did not ask for any money so we see that the gospel today some gospels i'm going to call it in quote unquote they are being over co commercialized and also before we read these verses it's a very important thing for us to remember that that while god was on this earth while christ was on this earth that he actually lived a life of, of poverty you know he had no uh, he had no home in this earth it's not saying that money is a bad thing but we do see that the love 
love of money is the root of all evil and if the gospel is going to be you know if the gospel is going to be centralized about making a gain we can see that this is not the gospel of Christ so the first verse we're going to read is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 3 and I love this verse because I believe that this verse shows clearly that the um, commercialized gospel is not of God because it says that out there are going to be people speaking perverse things they're going to be saying that gain is godliness but Paul says here strongly that we are to withdraw ourselves from these people and it says in verse 3 if any man teach otherwise so yeah it blew away so um so yes that is first timothy chapter 6 verses 3 to 6 and it says if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words even the words of our lord jesus christ and according to the doctrine which is according to godliness he is proud knowing nothing but doctrine about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy strife railings and evil surmising per perverse abutings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of this truth supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself so we see here in first timothy chapter 6 verses 3 to 6 that paul is talking about there are going to be men coming with false doctrines and it's going to be against you know if it's not if it's against the wholesome words of jesus christ and it's not according to the gospel that is according to godliness this person's going to be proud you know there's going to be envy strife and evil surmising so not only does the gospel that says gain is godliness is not the gospel of christ but also there's characteristics there you know envy strife and evil surmising so a second uh, book that i want us to look at in regards to this gospel that has been commercialized is micah chapter 3 and also in this verse it's very interesting because it mentions that these false prophets they're going to be saying you know give me money and then I could help you but we see that that is not the cause when Christ was on this earth he did not ask for one penny for healing or for the or for people to receive you know a healing of the hemorrhage or for their eyes to be opened and in verse 3 it says in my sorry in Micah chapter 3 verses 5 and 11 it says thus save the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people ear that bite with their teeth and cry peace and he that put it not into their mouth they even prepare war against them so it's very interesting and it's very interesting now i've got a horse here just watching um and yeah we love our animals but continuing in verse five it's very interesting because it says you know peace they, these prophets they speak peace and when people do not feed into their mouth they make war against them so when these people find people that don't agree with them they put war against them and it's very interesting and in verse 11 it says the heads of thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire and the prophets thereof divine fund money yet they lean upon the Lord and say is not the Lord among us none evil come upon us so we see again that there's this guide in Christianity these people it clearly says here that they are going to be um, the priests thereof they teach for hire they teach for money and these people are still going to be claiming that you know is God not with us but we see according to 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 3 to 6 that this is not the gospel of godliness and also in Micah chapter 3 uh, verses 5 and 11 it tells us that this is a false gospel these are false prophets that you know that if do you do not feed them they make war against you and these false prophets they ask for money in order for you know things to happen so i just shared with you some short thoughts in regards to the prosperity gospel but in the comments below i'm going to leave my blog post there if you want to see more verses and this should give us assurance that anyone preaching a gospel that saying you know gain is god in us say you know in order for this to happen you have to lay 50 pounds in order for that to happen you have to do this and that that is over commercializing the gospel and we have to stick to the written word of god and the only way we can stay free you know from these false prophets from these false teachers is literally by studying the word and making the word of god our guide so have a blessed day shalom and see you in the next video
So friends, I just wanted to show you this lovely horse and it's very interesting because um, I've been in this place for such a long while and I actually like these horses. They actually don't run away um, when you come to greet them. So look how beautiful this horse is. Hello horsey. And um, sadly I haven't got any food for it today so just thought to show you my little friend. Look how healthy and lovely it looks. So yes. Have a blessed day and see you in the next video which I'm actually about to record now and it's going to be about live the life of faith. So see you later. God bless.